Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Let me turn it over to you so you can tell us about your product. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so I'll start by sharing my screen, I guess. Um, okay, so thank you very much. So yes, so we're uh, we are SkyCAD Systems, and we're designing a product called SkyCAD Electrical. That is uh, basically aimed at uh, electrical engineers and designers to help them do, do uh, their job, essentially. So we'll look a, a bit into uh, into how we we do this. Uh, electrical is at, has three license levels: uh, uh, standard, advanced, and pro. And as you might have guessed, uh, the the higher you go in the the license level, the more feature you have access to. So this presentation will follow that order. We'll start by showing you what's in standard, then advanced, and then pro. Uh, but in, uh, in a nutshell. Uh, essentially, standard license gives access to whatever we call standard ECAD tools, and by ECAD I mean electrical CAD. So whatever you ex you you expect to find in any ECAD tool, you find in in this the standard license level. Then advanced license gives access to Excel export as well as PLC automated generation. And Pro license gives access to panel layout tools and our design reuse features. Uh, 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 these are separated into two categories, configuration management, which is essentially defining option, making the design corresponding to that option. And then when you uh, enable that option, the design comes in. And when you disable the option, the design disappears. And also design by system, which is in a different a bit of a different scenario where you basically can take entire systems, store that the catalog, and reuse them a, as you want. So we'll we'll go in, in, into more details uh, uh, once once we'll reach the pro license level. So that's about what what we're we're about to show you. So let's start with standard license. Uh, so this is this is SkyCAD that's open without any any project open. So we'll start by doing this for this this small uh, presentation. What I'll do is I'll create a really small project, just a conveyor project. It's really small, but nonetheless, it'll allow me to to show you the main features of SkyCAD. So for for this, I'll go to create add. I create a project based on a template. The advantage of that is I can predefine uh, 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 settings in my template and even pre-drawn sheets. Uh, so it is my project uh, called Project One, so I can expand properties to have access to all the properties of the project. Now, this list of properties that you see here is entirely customizable. You, you if there are uh, uh, some properties there that you do, do not want to use, or you need some extra ones, everything is customizable in SkyCAD. So that includes the symbols here, the, the components we'll talk about, the sheets, everything in SkyCAD is customizable. So here I'll just turn the demo because I'll name this project demo. And I'll go ahead and create a sheet. Okay, so there's my, my sheet that's created. I'll start by a vertical three phase, such as this, and I'll move on with an horizontal one. So right now, if I zoom in a bit, you can see that automatically it, it connected the dots here, it added the dots, and if I move the connection around, it's gonna do that as well. This is again pretty standard in any ECAT tool. If I add in a motor, it'll number it automatically NTR1. If I and there's a second one, it's MTR2. And if I decide to force MTR2 to MTR1, it will tell me no, there's already one that exists, of course, which is pretty standard again for any ECAT tools. Now, the, the way that the, num the motor has been numbered is just sequentially MTR1, MTR2. But as I mentioned earlier, everything is in SkyCAD is customizable. And if I switch back to the presentation, I want to give you an example. This sort of numbering format is also available in SkyCAD, meaning when, when you have a, a, a columns of, of, of uh, line numbers and everything within that row is numbered based on, on, on that number, that's also co compatible with, with, with SkyCAD. Uh, uh, it's just that for the current presentation, we did not set it up this way. So back to, uh, to this. Um, now, if I insert a symbol uh, on top of connection, it will cut the connections to make room for the symbol. If I move it out, it'll replace the the, uh, the connections. So I'll just keep on inserting my motor starter here. Now, the, the, the small motor starter I just did, uh, uh, normally you, any any designer will, will do this on, on a pretty frequent basis. So it is totally possible to actually select everything here and save it as an entire block like the one I have here. Now, I will not insert this again because I've already did it here, but I can do the same thing for the transformer line. So uh, once it's did, every element is inserted as if I did it uh, uh, one, one uh, by one. Uh, now I'll move on and insert a normally closed contact. Now, as you, you can see, it's, it's it numbered at CM2. That's how my contactors are, are, are numbered right now. But actually, I want to link it to that overload. 
And by default, the software does not know this, so it just created a new con contactor. But now what the only thing I need to do is make sure it's selected and click on link with, and now a rubber band follows the cursor around. I click on my overload and automatically it's OL1 and a cross-reference appeared right there, if you can see. Now, talking about the cross-reference, uh, uh, um, now the one C3 and one F7 that we see here is because that symbol is located on page one, uh, uh, row F and uh, uh, column seven. So if I zoom in again, if I move this guy here, automatically it's recalculated based on its new position. And if I move it back, it's recalculated again. So this concept of automatically updated information is uh, exists throughout SkyCAD, meaning that not only for cross-references, but for any type of information that is displayed in a project, everything is always automatically updated. There's no need to regenerate parts list or regenerate terminal strip layouts everything is always updated in real time. And I'll have the occasion to show you this uh, uh, on different uh, uh, moments during the demo. So now I'll just move on. I'll, I'll, I'll add the normally closed uh, push button and I'll insert a block for the control stage and I'll link my off-page references this way. Now again, you can see a cross-reference appeared here. Anytime I have a cross-reference, I, I can click on it and choose navigate, it'll bring me to the other end. Now, in this case, it's in the same page, but if it were to be on a different page, it would have opened the page and highlighted the, the, the other uh, extremity. So at that point, I, the only last thing I need to do is to insert the control block here. And that block, if I zoom in a bit on it, that block when it was created, that contact was associated to that coil, so it remembers that and automatically associated them together and create the cross-reference. So the only thing that, that remains to do is to associate this one to my coil. And now that it's done, I've got everything that is pretty much finished in my schematic. Now, just this, the, the schematic part of it. Uh, now, when I inserted uh, 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 symbols, it created parts in the background. So I can access the parts either by double clicking on the symbol. This is These are all properties of the motor, the component behind it. Now, if I... Uh, 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 one way to, sh to see all the components is th through the tree view. Right now on my tree view, I see sheets. That is because if I click on show, the sheet query is displayed. If I disable it, sheets are gone. And these are all the different queries that I can actually see in my tree view. For example, components. So now the components are shown uh, uh, in my tree view. If I single click any of those, it will highlight the symbol that is associated to that, that component on the right. And vice versa, if I click, on a symbol, it highlights the component on the tree view. Okay. Um, one other way of seeing the, the, all the components is through a parts list. So if I click on my project, go to show and show parts list, I here I get essentially the same the same elements that I have here. I, and, and as I click on them, you see that it highlights the one on the left because it's actually the same element. But it displays the the, the information in some sort of a spreadsheet view. Uh, which is which tells me that actually none of those have any part number defined. So I can do this directly through this view by clicking uh, the, the element. I click home and catalog and it'll display all the motors I have in my catalog currently. So I just choose the one that makes sense to me in my project. It updates the information here. And if I go back to the uh, sheet and zoom in on the motor, I can see that actually it, it updated the power and FLA as well as the pin numbers. Assigning part number can also be done directly from the symbol. So if I click on a symbol, click on catalog, I have the, the breakers I have in my catalog. So I choose the one that I want, click OK. And if I go back to my parts list, I can see that actually both part numbers have been defined. So that's pretty much uh, 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 what it is to assign part numbers in, in SkyCAD. Uh, now, th this list, as I mentioned, uh, well, I mean, all this to say that I'm not going to go ahead and, 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 and assign each of those. The, the concept, uh, I'm, I'm assuming your, your, uh, the concept is straightforward. So, so we won't go too much in, into details. But that, that list, as I mentioned, is a working view parts list. It, it allows you to see the parts that are there and which one have a part number and which one don't. But at some point in time, you will want to print this list. So to do this, we have we have several ways. One of the ways is to, when, when the, 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 the list is displayed, I have a button here that says insert list block. So I click on it and it'll ask me on which sheet I want to show that list. So I'll click, I'll set sheet number one. I could create a new one at that point, but I'll choose this one because it fits. And it opens the sheet and after a quick second, you see some sort of a, a phantom drawing following the cursor around. That's the header of, of, of uh, the list. If I click, 
it displays the list uh, uh, on the sheet. Now, the list, as you can see, is a bit too large. That's not a problem. I'm going to drawing and scale. And with the mouse score, uh, wheel, I just scroll to reduce the scale of the list, and I'm done. Now, uh, um, as I mentioned earlier, everything in SkyCAD is updated in real time. So if I zoom in a bit on this, let me show you this once again. So if I add a button here, it adds an align for that button. If I go in and assign a part number, it'll update the part number here. And if I decide to delete the list, then uh, the, the, the button, the list is also updated. So everything in SkyCAD is always updated in real time. Um, one thing I want, I, I need to do uh, right now, you can notice that none of the wires have a, a number. Uh, the components are numbered as I inserted them, but the wires uh, did not. Now I can go here and process renumbering and ask to renumber absolutely everything. And now suddenly my wires all have numbers. Let me make room bit or clean this up by aligning wire numbers together. It just looks a bit neater. Okay, and now if we look at this uh, more thoroughly, we can see that here we have L1, L2, and L3. We Right now we have multiple numbering scheme in that, that same page. This L1, L2, L3 is because that this particular connection has been customized so that it's prefixed with L. And when numbering, when, when starting renumbering, it just selected everything from the top left and sequentially num sequentially numbered going uh, uh, all the way to the bottom right. So that that. This one is one, two, three, because it's the first one on, on the top left, and then this one and this one. These ones are a bit different. If I zoom in a bit, you see 1T1, 1T2, and 1T3. These are actually numbered based on the component they're connected to, or more precisely, the motor. So the one that we see here is actually the one that comes from the, the MTR1. And T1, T2, and T3 are the terminal numbers that we see, we see here. So if I decide, for example, to double click here and change this to U1 instead of T1, now go back here to renumbering, ask for renumbering wire. Everything is renumbered based on the information I, I just changed. Something uh, 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 additional to this numbering scheme is that it actually can jump over symbols. So that's why you see U1, U1, A, 1, T2, A, and, and so on. It, it could go on, say, B, C, and D. That, that's usually pretty pretty appreciated on, on a, a uh, when you do maintenance, maintenance work. Where you, any, any electrician will grab a wire and know exactly what's connected at the other end, uh, uh, regardless of how many components it, it, it has to go through. Uh, last thing I need to show in this, uh, sorry, in this standard uh, uh, feature are terminal strip. So uh, right now, I, 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 I need a terminal strip right there. But before I do this, uh, uh, I need to basically locate my component. Now, when I'll be editing my terminal strip, when I'll be looking at uh, 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 organizing it in what order I want, I will be seeing all the components that are connected to my terminal strip, but that are that, that are in the same panel as, as the terminal strip on one side, and everything that's connected to, to the terminal strip, but at, that is outside the, 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 the panel on the other side of the terminal strip. So in order for that view to work well, I must make sure that all the components are in the proper panel. So I'll do just that. So there are multiple ways to, to assign a location to a, a, a component in, in SkyCAD, but one quick way to do it is to go through the tree view. I click on my project, go to show, and here I got a quick call, unlocated components. If I click on it, the same list of components comes in, but these are all these are all co correspond to components for which I have not yet assigned into which panel they belong. So I will do the, the, just that. I click basically everything, and I just make sure that the motor is not selected because naturally the motor is outside; it's not in the panel. I click on home and assign location. I got one panel in my project called panel one. I click OK, and now everything is out from the list. And uh, the only thing that remains is MTR one. Uh, naturally, because this one is still unlocated. Now that everything is located, I can go ahead and assign terminal. So I click on my terminal, uh, assign from uh, uh, in a line, and now my terminal, my terminals are just inserted. Now, as you can see, they actually are numbered based on the wire number that goes through them. This, again, this is customizable. If you'd rather have a different type of numbering for your terminal strip, like a a simple sequential numbering format, one, two, three, it's totally possible. It's just This is just an example. Now, uh, uh, I've inserted terminals on, on my, my sheet, but the, 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 the purpose of having a terminal strip management 
is to be able to come out with a terminal strip layout, meaning that a physical view of the terminal strip to actually uh, have an indication of, of, of what to connect on one side and on the other side and, and how to assemble the, the, the terminal strip in, in the panel. So to do this, you need, you need to go through the view I, I, I mentioned earlier, to access the view and just click on, a, on any of these three terminals. And I have here view terminal strip. So that's the view I was talking about. Let me reduce this to make a bit more room and that as well. So now we can see my, 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 my terminal strip with the three small three uh, uh, terminals in there. The, the, the what's connected on one side and the exterior side, what's connected inside the panel, the wire number that, that goes through it. If there was bri were bridge, I, I, I'd see them here and partner work, uh, manufacturer and, and, and everything. At that point, I can actually just click and drag if I need to move my terminals around or I could use sorting tools here that are supplied in SkyCAD. You can sort terminals based on what's connected inside or what's connected outside. There are, are several different tools that will allow you to, to automatically organize your terminals within your terminal strip. We won't go too much into details right now, but the point is that you, through that view, you order the terminals in your terminal strip in the way that makes sense to you. Once you're done with that, you will want to see your terminal strip layout onto a sheet. So in a similar manner than we did for the parts list, when, when this is displayed, I have here, uh, here layout terminal strip. So I click on this, it'll ask me, okay, on what sheet, again, I'll choose sheet, uh, sheet one, click okay. And now again, a phantom view uh, follows my cursor around, I'll just put it here and that's my, my terminal strip. So at that point I can go to drawing. If I want to rotate it, no problem. If I want to change the scale again, in the same manner I did for the sheet, no problem. Uh, uh, at the risk of repeating myself, I mentioned earlier that everything in Sky in SkyCAD is automatically updated. Well, again, let's say that in this case, I, I realized after laying out my terminal strip that I forgot something in my terminal strip. So I go back to the terminal strip view, and then I say, okay, I need to add uh, terminal stops and terminal separators. So I, just, I do, do uh, just that, click and drag to position them at the right place. And if I go back to my sheet, I notice that everything was updated automatically. So no need to regenerate terminal strip layouts at all. Uh, so that covers pretty much what we wanted to see in uh, uh, the uh, standard license. Well, essentially it's automatic wire and component numbering, parts list and build material management, which are updated in real time, automated cross references and terminal strip management. Now, everything you just saw, uh, uh, comes with our standard license, which is free. So there's no need to, 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 to supply any money at all to get everything that you just saw right now. Um, next, what we're going to see is advanced license. So we'll start with Excel export. So uh, a little earlier in the demo, I went here and showed you there was a parts list like this. So, uh, uh, and also there was a terminal strip view like this that's showing some sort of a spreadsheet view. Uh, these, whenever you have a view like this, uh, uh, it is possible to export to Excel, provided that you have the advanced license uh, uh, installed or actually uh, uh, purchased. So when, whenever you see a, a, a list like this, the, the, the terminal strip, well, you can go to export and click on export to Excel. So after a quick second that it starts Excel in the, in the background, it uh, exported my list to Excel. It put it, uh, everything at, at the, the uh, top left corner. Now this one is a just it, it just opened a blank Excel spreadsheet because it didn't didn't have any template. But I can actually define a template for a, 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 a specific query uh, like this one. So in parts this query that I, that shows here, I do have a template set up for my my uh, my uh, export to Excel. So if I click export in Excel. It actually uses a template, so now I got a, a nice header and, 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 and things are spaced out uh, differently because I specified that in, in, in my, my uh, template. So that's basically what the, there is to see for uh, uh, export to Excel. The other important uh, uh, feature that comes with, with uh, advanced license is uh, automated PLC uh, generation. So the, 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 the reason for that, or the reason for that feature is that pretty much everyone we spoke to that does uh, uh, controlled uh, panel design uh, almost always work in a similar workflow. Uh, when they start a project, one of the very first thing that they do is that they 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 come out they start their project with a list of IOs that will need to be implemented, and some at some point in the process they will need to have a, a PLC schematics drawn. And between the two, there's a lot of redundant information that is repeated, and that is a pretty tedious task to do manually. So we've came up with a, with a feature that allows to take 
to start from the PLC list, the, the, the IO list in Excel, and to automatically generate the PLC schematic that you see uh, on the right. So let's see how this is done. So I'll just basically start by uh, I click on, uh, on my project in the home time I have import IO list. So I click on import IO list and let me just grab my IO list before I actually click OK and, and, and import. Let me show you what's in there. So if I open it in, in, in Excel, you can see that this is a very simple list. It only has two columns, IO type and IO comment. Now it could very well have multiple columns here and your IO list most certainly have more columns than this. But the reason why there, is, there are only two right now is to show you that SkyCAD only requires those two columns in order to be able to generate your PLC schematics automatically. So now that you, we've, we've covered that, let's, let's click on it and select it. And we'll see that it actually, this is the imported data that came from the IO list. Uh, uh, and we can see actually columns got added. So uh, the first column, well, let's, let's take a look at this one. It says demo under owner. That means that these IOs belong to the project. They don't actually belong yet to a PLC nor a PLC module. So that this means that these IOs are not yet implemented on a PLC. So they're, they're in a pending state. So they will. They actually need at some point in time during the the, the, the workflow of the of the, the design will need to eventually belong to a PLC. Uh, uh, the connected to this actually allows me to oh, sorry to go to define for that given I/O this output will be connected to this coil. This one will be connected to this coil. This one to this pilot light, and so on. I can go on like this and fill all the, the information. Uh, requires terminal is because those, for example, let's say those two pilot lights, since I know they will be connected outside the panel, I'll say that I require terminals for those. Now I'll leave it at that and I can go ahead and create a new page. Now I'll choose the PLC module that will implement those IOs I inserted there. So in this case, we can see this in, in Alan Bradley's uh, 5069 OV8. Now, one thing I can do right now is while it's selected, I click on generate comment and it generate the comment automatically. And then while it's still selected, generate actual IOs. Now these, from the list I showed you before of pending IOs, it shows me the list of pending IOs that are compatible with the module that are, I inserted. So the input IOs are not there. I'll choose three for now. Although I, I specified four here, I'll choose uh, just three, you, you, you'll see why later. And I click okay. And automatically, it generated all uh, all I, I, I needed to see. So it put the, the comment uh, here that, that was on the list. It draw a, a connection, inserted the symbol I specified, and in the case of the light, it added terminals on both sides. Now, the reason why I chose only three is because actually at any point in time, I can single click any of the IOs that is defined on the card and choose, okay, I want to generate some uh, one here. So I'll choose the one that's missing, click okay, and it'll add it right there. So this is how, in, in, in very few clicks, when you have an I.O. list in Excel and you import it into SkyCAD, in very few clicks, you end up with an entire uh, uh, schematics done for your PLC uh, in a much faster mean, mean that if you had to draw everything by hand and copy paste information from SkyCAD. So that, that covers pretty much what there was to, to show in the advanced license feature. So essentially export to Excel and PLC generation, which adds to everything we, sh we saw previously in the standard license feature. So that uh, all this comes for a, a price of $95 uh, dollar a month in US dollar. Now uh, uh, let's look at what we have in pro license features. We'll start by panel layout module. So back to SkyCAD. Now um, the point of, of making a, a panel layout design is to basically make a plan where you will see exactly uh, 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 what parts are laid out in the panel. So you need to, to see exactly the look of the parts you chose when you assign the part number. So all this to say that there's an intimate relation between panel layout and the part numbers that you, you've selected. So because of this, I will not be using this demo example I did where only part of, of, of the, the components have a part number assigned. I'll create a new one based on a template that that where where all the parts are properly uh, designed or defined allowing me to show you uh, 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 everything in panel layout so we can see that here the part list is all properly uh, all parts uh, are, have been defined so uh first thing i want to do is show what are the panels now i've got one main panel 
and my main my panel has actually two sub panels. Uh, uh, each of those have a layout view I can see. So this is my the view of my panel, and actually I can I can see the view that this is the 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 more precisely the backplate view inside my panel. So I could very well click on the backplate and actually isolate the view and only work on the backplate itself, which which is what I'll do now. So there are many ways of to to, to start a, a panel design. So I'll just I'll just start in in my case I'll start by adding wireways like so. Uh, uh, now this wireway automatically it remembers the last one I inserted. If I want to change, I click on my wireway, click on catalog. I said I have a two inch wide, wide uh, wireway, click on it, and it'll update this. Uh, if I want to go back, I just go back to the other one, and it, it, it does that, and it'll remember that 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 setting for the next one that I insert. Uh, so like this. So I'll just keep on doing this. I do the same thing for rails. And here's the second one. And uh, let's let's assume that I'm done with inserting my 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 wireways and rails. I can now start inserting stuff. This is the list of whatever has to be laid out in my panel. So I'll start by a transformer. Transformer comes in. I'll click around here. Uh, this one was laid directly on the back plate. Now, if I choose instead a fuse, my fuse. Now, if I move around here, I can actually see that uh, uh, if I if I go over a rail, it highlights the rail. That's because if I click here, it'll snap to the rail. And if I move my rail around, or if I decide to rotate it, it'll rotate with it, okay? Uh, on a rail, I can also justify left or right. In this case, I'll choose left. So next time I insert something on top of it, let's say the second fuse holder, if I click here, well, it'll not only snap to the, to, to the rail, but justify on, on the next, we'll, we'll grab the next uh, position on, uh, on the left, I can also do multiple selections. Let's let's select the last two things that need to be inserted there. So automatically, it 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 selects the first one I select. I click and then automatically switch to the other one and click again. So we can very quickly uh, fill in a rail uh, using this method. Let me just un take out the rail justification and show you the PLC now. I click on PLC. This is my PLC. Now you can see that all the modules comes with the PLC. Uh, if I click to insert, this is only a one-shot deal. I, I, I don't need to in manually insert the modules. Uh, they all come automatically. And more precisely, let me zoom in a bit on this. If I double click on my PLC and have access to PS PLC information, I can actually go to show and show the modules. I can see actually that the modules, this is an output and an input and then two outputs. Maybe that doesn't make sense to me. I want to have all my outputs together. in my So I can add, just click and drag in the order to position it and it'll update it here automatically. If I decide to remove one, it'll remove one as well. In the same manner, if I click on terminal strip, if I insert a terminal strip, I can actually insert on the rail and double click my terminal strip, view what's inside of it by going to show and terminal some content. So if I decide, for example, let's say I'll copy this one and add, add one here as spares, it adds the spare automatically at the end. If I click and drag, make, make full selection, click and drag to put them into position, everything is updated automatically, okay? So again, as I said, often everything in SkyCAD is always automatically updated. So now my my my, uh, uh, my panel is, has, has evolved. Now at any point in time, to check if I'm, 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 I've done things right, at, at any point in time, I can check the clearance of, of each part. If it was designed, uh, uh, defined in the part that, that, that uh, came from the catalog, I can actually see that in this case, well, my, my, my transformer actually, uh, uh, the, the clearance that is required overlaps the, the, the wire away or wire duct, I can just move it a bit and then I'm good. Uh, so that was for the clearance. Uh, uh, let's assume that basically I'm done with my with my panel layout. Right now, if I look at the main panel uh, uh, layout, everything I did on the back plate was updated in that view uh, as, as well. Um, but that said, that view is basically in space right now. I'm, I'm working at a one-to-one. -one, there's no title block around. So I'll want to sh basically show that inside, inside a, a title block. So to do this, I'll just display all the layouts I have. Click on my main panel layout and choose layout inside a sheet. It'll ask me on, on, on what sheet. In this case, I will create a new sheet because the other one is too and <clears throat> doesn't have any room. Uh, and automatically it brings me to that sheet and it shows my layout on a one-to-one -one scale. I just click where I want it, and of course it's much too large, but no problem. Go to drawing and scale in the same manner I did before. And with the mouse wheel, I just uh, scale the view to the uh, the size I want. And 
may be centered in the, in the page. I can do the same thing for the backplate itself. Let's do that. So insert the backplate onto a sheet. I go and create a sheet. Select it. My backplate comes in here. And uh, I go to drawing and scale it down. Now, you may be wondering why exactly I would show the, the, the panel with the backplate inside and the backplate on top of it. Well, that is because in this case, I could actually decide to show the drill hole pattern of uh, uh, the backplate, uh, which is derived out of the position of the rails, wireways, and, and the transformer. And again, everything is updated automatically. If I come here and move my transform transformer here, the uh, uh, holes that I've moved uh, as well. So uh, that's about what there was to show in uh, panel layout uh, design. One thing that we want to point out uh, in the coming features uh, uh, that that are not that in, are in, in in work right now, we are going to provide some sort of automated way to um, to uh, generate callout lists. So there'll be a, a layout onto a sheet as so. A list will be shown on the right. Both will be associated together, and these 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 bubbles will will come out automatically, and their numbers will be will be generated automatically based on the position in, in the list. But that that's in work right now. It's not available yet. Now let's see what we have in uh, design reuse, which is uh, uh, the last uh, features to see in the pro license. So again, as I mentioned earl uh, earlier at the beginning, this is separated on two categories, configuration management and design by system. Configuration management is more aimed at, at manufacturers of OEM products, meaning o products that, that usually have a model number or model name that they offer to their customer in, in, within a catalog. And their customer, when ordering that, may decide to order to select options. So, and, and when these options have an influence on the outcome of the schematics, well, configuration management allows to manage this quite, quite easily. Design by system is more aimed at, at people that do one-offs, but that said, uh, uh, since everyone is specialized in a, in a field of work, uh, each machine is different, but at the same time, it's pretty similar to one another. So systems uh, are, are uh, uh, similarities or exist between two different product or uh, 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 projects uh, uh, of the same manufacturer. So the design by system allows to basically uh, isolate a system or sub design of your machine, store that into the catalog, and reuse it later on on a different project. So we'll see more in detail how, how this is done. We'll start by by configuration management. So for this, I'll close this project and just create a new one. But now I'll choose a special template, design reuse template. Okay. In this set template, basically, when it opens up, it seems that nothing is, is, is there. There's just basically a power and control, and it's empty. Well, actually, that's not exactly true, because if I click on my project, go to configuration management, and ask to display options, I've got, actually, or oh, let me just do this again. I, I want to show the sheet at the same time. So I'll click here, the sheets, and configuration management, options. Now i got the sheets at the same time. Okay. So I, I've got POMP1, POMP2, and, and PLC. So let's see what happens if I decide to enable POMP1. Well, automatically, the power of my POMP1 comes in control as well. Uh, uh, contacts are linked to the coil. Part numbers are defined. If I had a panel, everything could be laid out in the panel all in, in, in uh, one click. Uh, if I expand the POMP1 option, I see I got a reverse option. If I decide to click this one again, well, the reverse aspect of my pump actually is designed in one, one click. Uh, uh, everything is there, part numbers, links between contact and call, everything is done in one shot. If I decide to choose pump 2, well, a second pump uh, appears. Uh, let's move this a bit further. If I click on PLC, I actually have an entire sheet that comes in. I can actually open it. And if I expand the PLC option, I have either a micro logic or a control logic. If I decide micro logic, a micro logic comes in. If I decide control logic, a control logic comes in. So this is basically what you end up when you have uh, uh, when you're using uh, configuration management, and uh, you 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 view or display the options tree, and you just check the options that that correspond to what your customer order. Uh, uh, of course, it's 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 nice and handy to 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 see something and just check the options the, that that uh, you need. But it's also very easy to come up with with a a uh, uh, these options. So let me show you basically how I got these options in place in that template. So I'll, for this, I'll I'll create a brand new project. So I'll go here, create a new project using standard template. So there's no there are no options designed in this one. So if I click option, not, uh, nothing is, is there. Now I'll go ahead and create a sheet. 
and I'll I'll do basically the same type of of, of project that we had before. So I'll add in transformer line, I'll add in control section, and I'll just basically link those together. Okay, so now I'm done with my my uh, my my baseline. So everything that I just did, since there was no option defined, everything is part of the baseline. So it's it's essentially it's everything that's there. Uh, uh, um, regardless of the option that I might create. So now I'll go here and go to configuration management and choose that option. So now I've got my option and it's named op option one. So to be coherent, I'll just name this prompt one as well. Now that my option is created and is checked, whatever I'm about to do is going to be flagged as being part of option prompt one. So if I link this one to this one, now let's say, okay, that's right done. I could go ahead and, and assign part number and so on. I, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. And right now, I just did my uh, um, my my pump one. If I decide to uncheck it, everything is is off. If I decide to check it back, everything is back. Now it may look like like layers uh, uh, that are just turned on and off, but it's more more complex than this because you could have different part numbers set based on, on, on different options. So I can have POM1 for 3 HP, POM1 for 5 HP, and and and, and part numbers uh, would, would change. Or also, for example, as previously, I, I've, I've inserted that block here, which, which came in with that fuse. It was part of the baseline. And what, let's say for whatever reason I see fit, when my one is there, I do not, I want my fuse to be actually here. Well, next time I unpick my pump, fuse is at that. At, at, at this place, if I check it back, it was move here. So it's, it's it's a lot more powerful than just having things that pop in and pop out. It actually allows all different configurations to 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 basically pop up automatically based on the the, the options you have. Uh, so that's essentially what what configuration management has, uh, has to offer in SkyCat. So it's very really, very appreciated by people doing doing uh, uh, OEM machines. Where you, the customer order uh, uh, from with, with options. So it, the the so it in a nutshell, the point of this is to have basically uh, you receive an order for your customer from your, your your customer, and if your option tree here was defined in a similar manner than the option that is that is presented to your customer, you just check the options that they 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 selected, and your your entire schematic is finished. You can go up right, right up to to uh, production. So that's what configuration management in SkyCAD is all about. The other way of using uh, 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 or, or feature that is concentrating on design reuse is design by system. So as I mentioned earlier, this is more for people doing one-offs. So uh, every machine is different, too much different to be able to use configuration management. So let's let's take a look at how this is done. Again, I'll create a new project uh, based on a standard template. So now I'll, I'll again create a project. So I go ahead and and assign my three phase value assign this and uh my, my control again so i that would be normal way of working regardless of design by system so at this point in time i inserted uh, uh, elements so if i look at my parts list here i will see that that some of the the, the, the parts that are here do not have any part numbers so i would still need to do that if i would be nor working in a normal in a normal scenario uh, uh um, so i'll leave those on on those part with with no part numbers for because you'll see actually it'll help me demonstrate how design by system is is, is handy. So at this point in time in my project, let's say that I need to to add a, a conveyor, and my conveyors are already always done in the same manner. So normally, if I would be working in, in a normal uh, uh, dynamic, I would be inserting a block like this for the for, for the the, uh, the power section, a block for the control. I would link the coils to the contacts. I would assign the part numbers properly based on what I need. And so there's a lot of manual operation, a, a lot of human error, uh, potential human errors uh, uh, along the way. Uh, the alternative that we offer is that if I click on my project, we'll create add, I say create, and add systems. So these are the systems that I have currently in my in my my catalog, and I have an entire uh, uh, conveyor. Manual means manually controlled. So I click this one. As I click conveyor, it actually added the, the, the entire conveyor to, to my to my uh, project. So if I go back to the process right now, already I have a bunch of parts with the proper part number that are uh, uh, imported into the project. 
if I look at what's inside, I see that actually it comes also with blocks that are predefined. So these blocks are very similar to these ones that, that, that are here uh, uh, in, in, in the control section, but these one actually, everything has already been linked. So all I need to do is use this, this command here, go to my page, is implement block, click here, I click on where I need to put it, and it's actually taken off from the list. Click on control, do the same thing, put it into control, now I'm done. Every, like I said, all the links, uh, as you can see, cross references are good. The links have been done uh, okay. The, the 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 parts are defined, so my, my my schematic is finished. And if I I had a QA processed on my conveyor system, all I already know that everything is properly defined. And everything will, will 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 work well because QA was already done on the the uh, conveyor system. If along the way I decide to, well, this actually this conveyor is not going to be needed, I just click on the system from the project, click delete, and everything is removed wherever I inserted it. Let, let's push this a little further. So I'll, 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 again, I'll repeat the operation. I'll add in a system, but in this case, I'll choose conveyor control by PLC. And before I click on OK here, I'll make sure that the control key is, is pressed. So now I can add, I can add two. So now it's going to import automatically two conveyor PLC control to my project. So again, what, are, what do we have now? We have, again, a power that has to be implemented here. And it'll remove it from the list. And a power that has to be implemented here. And these two I won't because let me show you why. Not only in a system I have blocks that, that come with it, but I, also, I can also show pending IOs. So, so previously uh, in, in the in the demonstration, I showed that we can import IO list from a, an Excel spreadsheet, and once they're imported, these IO are in, are are in a pending state, meaning that they are not yet assigned to a PLC. But you will require along your design to assign them to a PLC. Well, we're exactly in that state, but it's the, instead of these these IOs, they did not come from from an, an Excel spreadsheet. They came from the the uh, conveyor system that I imported in my project. So uh, said uh, differently, whenever you're going to be using this conveyor system, you will need to implement those two IOs on whatever PLC you have in your in your your, your machine. So this specific conveyor system has two IOs to implement. So if I look at my project and look at what all the, the PLCs, well, I've got a total of four, two per per uh, uh, PLC. So at that point, all I need to do is basically create a new sheet. And in the same manner I did for the PLC generation, insert my, the module I need, generate the comments, and generate the PLC. Just select everything. I don't even, don't even need to specify what's connected to or if it, if it uh, requires terminal because that has been defined in the system when I did it. I just click OK, and everything is automatically generated. So this is basically the discovers uh, 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 basically, what how design reuse is is, is thought out is you you when you have systems that are repeated uh, on different projects that you have, it is possible to design those systems entirely, store them in the catalog, and then reuse them as many times as you want in as many projects as you want. They will always be the same. All the QA is done, everything is done, and it speeds up a lot the process, the design process, and you you reduce human errors a lot. So that, if I go back to the presentation, that essentially covers uh, uh, whatever that, that we wanted to show you in uh, SkyCAD again, uh, in, in the entire SkyCAD, uh, uh, SkyCAD Electrical, actually. So uh, that pro license is detailed at 195 a month US dollars. So the standard license is free, the advanced license is at $95 a month, and pro license is $195 a month. Something that's very important to, not, to understand, our licenses are concurrent. So this means that if you have four, five, or six, no, ma no matter how many people will need to use SkyCAD, each and every one of them can have a free standard license installed on, on their computer and you can have just one pro license or one li advanced license and everyone will be able to share that license amongst themselves provided that only one uses it at the same time so this is a this is a the business model that is very appreciated by our customers that uh, uh, basically the, 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 it, it's in, in phase with how they work most of the time standard licenses is, is enough to do to do small work and only some some sometimes you will need to modify a, a panel or to 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 work with configuration management and 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 
having only one license that you share amongst users is is good enough for for most uh, most of the, of the cases so that that covers uh, anything that we had to show you so you can uh, basically come and visit us to get more information at on the skycat.ca uh, and contact us from there it'll be our pleasure to answer any extra questions that you may have so that's it and thank you very much so if somebody wants to know more where would they go on the website on skycat.ca and from there they can actually uh, uh, email us uh, uh, to ask some more some more uh, uh, information all right excellent well I appreciate you both your time very much uh, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on the product myself and trying it out all right. it looks very user friendly and and uh, really putting putting drawings together are going to be so much easier so well, gentlemen, thank you both very much for uh, spending a, a good portion of your day bringing me up to speed on, on uh, SkyCat. I really enjoyed it and uh, really thought you did a great job. So thank you both again. Thank you very much.